<clears throat> Hello? Um, I'm here, again, yay. Right. Hello, Kengo. Welcome to the stream. Alright, just give me one more real quick moment to uh, get stuff prepared. So this will be long shortly. Nice. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Um, works. You just get some. Where the fuck? Give me a moment. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Now I'm fully ready. There we go. So, last time we have ended up uh, in this city, I believe. Yes, layout seems to fit. This is our last location. Okay. So, looking at it, we have quite a lot of truck work left to do at the station, on the southern end at least. So let's uh, expand the baseboards, heading this way. And let's bring the terrain up as well. Right. Crossing is roughly here in real life, so 
so mm. let's see here put that junction in there maybe that's this one here Take it 200, uh, sorry, 400 meters out. 400 at 213. This junction. It's not straight. Don't think so. Doesn't matter. So uh, next to this junction, we have a crossover starting over. So something like from here, like that to there. Okay, it's, it's straight. It's good enough. There's no other crossover. Okay. But this track continues along. I'm not sure how long. How far. Doesn't matter really that much. Let's uh, see here. But another junction over there goes into four track. What appears to be the plan today? Um, just finishing the track work further down south. This junction to this junction it's 70 meters, followed by the end in 80 meters, followed by another junction in 50 meters, followed by the end of the junction in roughly 110 meters. Let's do it like that. So 70 meters from this junction. From there it's 80 meters. Then 50. 110. Hold by a fifty, all by a hundred and ten. Uh, 
How does this truck start? Shortly before the junction, okay. Roughly there. That. Middle there there see nicely done. I can get rid of all of these uh, rulers. I'll do that because they're only going to confuse me. Simply because of how many there are. Hmm? Right. Where does this track go? Down the long side, up to like somewhere here. Also gonna put it closer. But not the closest like this. Yeah, that's gonna work out much much better. Right. These two tracks they just continue down straight. For how long though? Let's go from junction. Three point four kilometers. Also divided by two. Hello, Sheridice. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I was editing one this micro stream, putting the other player's post on screen. Nice. As much micro stream that is, as it would be difficult to edit this one this micro stream. <laughs> yes, this past one this micro stream, as in this week's one. Eh? Yes. <laughs> for some reason it felt like it was already Sunday for a moment. <laughs> Red switch there, that's not good anime, it points you to the angle. Yeah. I'll get to that. Where is it? Here. Uh I'm sorry? Oh! That makes more sense now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good spot. <laughs> Got it. Yep. Alright, let's see here. Um... 1.7, okay. Should have figured that out myself, but whatever, fuck it, I'm not a math person. So, 1.7 kilometers going still straight out this way. Yeah, I have space for that, and not currently, still. Be good. From this junction. 1.7 at 214.
I have to be fairly straight. Alternatively, I can just take the tracks out that way and align them. <clears throat> <coughs> <coughs> Jesus. I like my throat to stop dying. This will not if this will not be straight I can just later move it. But I would first like to align the tracks. Yeah, that's good so far. All right, now, um, the one track going off to the side like that. Grab this type of track and let's make this little turn. So it does this. Like it needs to be a bit further from the tracks. Like that, okay. Goes back in. Goes a bit longer straight. And then it turns down this way again. I believe at this point it just, yeah, it goes straight. There's a little industry area. This trick appears. They go parallel with each other for a while. There's a, another crossover in the middle. Slight turn, another crossover, and then they end. Interesting design. To say the least. Cross over in the middle going this way. Now mind you, track layout is due to change for the industries depending on the available objects and stuff alike. I'm just building it to get kind of at least an idea of how it's supposed to look. But it's definitely not going to be the final look for uh, these industries. At least I think it's not going to be like that. It might happen that I just get it good enough that it will stay. But it all depends. Generally, I would like to keep the... Um, the shape of the tracks and the layout it might just be that they need to that they will need to be shorter or longer depending on the industries and this crossover is relatively to the beginning of this trade section so i'm just going to do that all right that works Now, on the other side, this one track goes a little bit away, and there's a tiny bit of fuckery going on. Let's see here. Comes in. And sort of like this kind of angle. To be probably a bit closer like that. We're taking out like this, I think. Maybe like that more. 
Yeah, it's better. First things first, it needs to be taking out this, this track. And that one parallels for quite a while. So basically like alongside that junction there. Okay. That's roughly where it should end. Well, let's try to make it like that. Like it's a bit more prominent this turn here. Yeah. Be something like this. And this a little bit like that. Okay. Maybe just a tiny bit more actually. Yeah, this is gonna be better. Now let's go from this other end. Is this track running parallel with a slight distance between the tracks? Um. To like here, I think. Yeah. So that I can somewhat align it. Mm hmm. It passes that warehouse, it splits up like this. Calculating. <laughs> no, there's only this many zoom in, so you serious. Trying to figure out where exactly I should put it, I'm probably giving way too much thought behind it, fuck it. Just gonna put it here. <laughs> That's too far. That's better. Alright. That concludes this station. Yep, that concludes this session, that's done.
Okay. What's in the chat? Hey, you didn't specify horizontal or vertical angle. <laughs> <coughs> Most of our souls are always dying. Just the new ones constantly take their place. Fair enough. I mean, I'm late. <laughs> nah, it's it's good. It's, I mean, it should. I mean, the, the stream was scheduled for, I believe, 4 p.m. The fact. So, in a, if anything, I'm like two hours early. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> Hello there. Didn't miss a whole lot. Yep. Say at least. Yeah, you didn't miss a lot. That was a little switch. Right, switch. Where are we at? We are at. Uh, Kizutsuka Nova Mesto. And we are making our last stretch towards uh, Jelena. When this piece of track is done, uh, it's uh, scenery time. No, well, not yet. Still need to do the terrain around the, uh, around the tracks, but uh, it's going to be scenery time after that. Three, true. Glad you conquered that station. Yes. Oh, the junction didn't work properly due to some of the check words being vertically misaligned. Yes. In fact, my message is highlighted in red. Mm hmm. Push time. Faints. <laughs> Faints. Damn it. Alright, so we are basically at this turn. So let's. Measure some stuff about this turn. Four three seven. Oh shit. Okay, I didn't expect to see this. This kind of fucks up the plan of the turn. Um hum. Now, which track is going straight? Which one is dividing? Which one is the dividing one? <laughs> the one that goes further out? I think it's uh, the right one. Yeah, the right one is turning. Left one is going straight. Okay, so in that case, I'm gonna measure this from the left track. Up to here. And this is a long straight stretch, so roughly here. We've got another relatively longer turn. Oh my god. Come on. Oh boy. To the bridge we need to get. Maybe a bit past it. So, in total we have roughly 4.8 kilometers to cover, which in reality is um, 2.4 kilometers to cover until the next station. Or until we are past the bridge. <laughs> of course. Not reading the DMs, because obviously. Wasn't the issue? What's the issue? I missed it. Oh, because of the bridge? Yes. No video playing for me so I can enjoy the stream only as audio. Well, that sucks. Uh, try reloading. Look at that beautiful scenery you just built. That's the best scenery I've ever seen in trains. Look at that! Don't check memes on stage. <laughs> May not be safe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to take the risk sometimes. When I when I trust the people. The few times that I trust the people. So far it's paid off. Alright, so um The issue is that the bridge splits apart like that. 
in the middle, which means that one of the tracks needs to be shifted. And in this case, with the duct, with the deuced, that uh, the track that is shifting is the right one, on this view at least. And so therefore I've decided to measure everything via the left track. Anyways, um... What's that? 443 at 188. So I need to divide that. Two hundred and twenty one eight eight. I hope this will work. Two twenty one eight eight. If it will not be nice and s nice, well. Very beautiful to drive across at full speed, then um gonna have to redo the measurements. But let's do this. Seven fifty five divided by two three seven seven at one sixty. Whatever, that works. <laughs> and I feel like this might be a bit too sharp. I'll see how it works out. Nope, wrong track. I don't know what the speed limit here is. I mean, the turn looks pretty sharp. Ninety. Okay. I'm not happy with this one. So I'm electing a different approach.
Alright, so... <laughs> All right, so we've got this. What's the distance between these tracks? Ten meters. How far? How far turn is the bridge? Two hundred and five. How long is the bridge? Roughly ninety five meters. Okay. Two five ninety five. Two five long is ninety five ten meters out. It also comes back at the end of that station. Two hundred and fifty meters. <laughs> Do you trust the people though? Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe a little page looks fine here. Wait, this is seven. Didn't know this was set in the UK. <laughs> but I didn't see this cliff on Google Maps. <laughs> Better warn the drivers of that. Yes, indeed. BRDN. 
Interesting how they've updated the spine pulsing texture at junction overlays to be more crisp, but not the rulers. Yep. Hey, did you see this clip I posted on the Discord on, of Minecraft? No, I have not. I'll check that uh, afterwards. Anyways, now we need to do a 500 meter turn to 186. That baseboard is useless. Three hundred and thirty, so that's thirty meter height. So, I wonder one eight six. I'm roughly there. Oh, but. 2.3 kilometers, okay, so that's what, 1.15 That's 2.11 
on, on rolling a zero on perception. It's just a funny moment that's all. Okay. Name your link where I posted on Ken Court. Okay, nice. Thank you. Am I tired? Relatively. But I won't I want to finish the track layout at least. How have I, how how have I been live for fifty minutes already? Seems like bullshit, but whatever. He's lying. Okay, roughly the same location. Now, we just have one small turn and we've got the bridge. I've actually realized what kind of scenery I'll have to do first. With, uh, with this. So, that's basically like this optimum sequence of uh, bullshit to obtain or a sequence of how to um, how to build this. Hold on. And Right, so let's do this. So, thing is, you've got. Firstly, you do the base terrain. I don't know why I have caps lock enabled. First thing you do is base terrain, which is this elevated to a flat area that you want to use. Then there's the track layout, which I've done with this here. And now comes the debate, pretty much, because there's two things that kind of share the position, depending on what you're trying to make. But in my case, I've already got the um, the idea of how I want to approach this in my head. So. We go actual terrain, which is the hills and the mountains and the rivers, followed by embankments for the tracks, whether it be terrain embankment or, well, if it's terrain embankment, then yes, do, the, do that first. If it's going to be a spline embankment, you want to do it much later, and I'll get to why. Then you want to do trackside objects. So this pretty much means signals, speed limits, levers, stations, platforms, right? Bridges, pylons. Then Catenary.
Now, catenary is the one that is uh, basically alongside the actual terrain because it actually depends how you want to actually go about this Be in reality it's not just that embankments are also on the same layer and what you will do first depends on what kind of scenery you're doing in my case i've just realized that the best course of action for me is to firstly do embankment, then catenary, then actual terrain. Right? So it depends on the way you are approaching things, the way that uh, what you are building and how you are building it and where you are building it. A part of track layout is going to be also super elevation and you know, all the junctions, you know, the station layouts, the yards and track elevation in general so if you have the gradients going up down this kind of stuff right and only after you've done all of this we can now move on to the next part of the scenery making and that is pretty much the general scenery so Station buildings, roads, highways, forests, fields, villages, cities. That comes last. I would say this is like the approach to um, the route building that I recommend or that I use or am going to use. Now, uh, you could argue that some of these could come before the other. So, for example, the trackside objects could very well come here, right? So, so, some of the stuff you can switch around. But there is some stuff that needs to be in order. And the stuff that needs to be in order is pretty much going to be this we've got the base terrain we've got the track layout just i just need to fix up the super elevation i have done the junctions the yards and the track elevation on this line well except for this last section that still needs to go down by six meters on a short stretch but that's doable without problems so i'll just have to go around fixing up super elevation for the turns then I'm going to do a terrain embankment, not a spline embankment, but a terrain embankment. The reason why I want to do terrain embankment is going to is basically because it's going to be much, much easier to work with catenary on a terrain embankment than it is on a spline embankment. In case you are using a spline embankment, you want it to go here. Like this. But otherwise, you're going to have very big trouble fitting catenary properly. Height-wise and stuff like that, when your trucks are going up the hill or down the hill, you know. So, it's all about making it efficient and easy for you to build. That condition does not uh, matter, really. I mean, you can change it here, yes. This, I, I would say that uh, track condition should be done before, like, as a part of track layout, simply because if you try to change the condition later when you have splines on top, uh, it tends to catch the spline instead of the track. So, yeah, track condition is also part of this, the track layout. And 
end of the life of the clock was recognized, but alas, in its sincerity, and so its mischief shall continue unhindered for ages to come. Bridges and roads. I would say that's part of the general scenery. Um, at least for, uh, you know, I mean, you don't really need to um, go about with track bridges nor road bridges. Roads can be done later along with all the crossings, uh, at least for me, because I will not be using like the pre-made crossings with all the tra tracks and roads attached. I'm going to be using ATLS or TRC system crossings. That's gonna be better for. Uh, it's gonna be more realistic. It's going to be much, much better to work with as well. Now, as for bridges, um, doesn't really matter as long as you don't need to place some kind of sign on the track. But even then, it doesn't really matter that much because you have bulk replace tool. So, for example, I know that in the future, when I actually put the bridges in here. Um, I'm gonna have to replace these tracks to not have ballast and generally just be like a bridge type track with a bridge spline underneath, right? And I know that I'm gonna have to put uh, catenary pylons on this as well. So there's various ways of approaching this. The way I'm going to approach this is uh, build everything around it first, then I'm gonna plop the bridge in and replace the track with the bulk replace tool. That way, I can get a better coordination of everything as well. Though sometimes if you need a very specific bridge, um, it might be better to put it first and then even actually before you do terrain as well around that. Because um, you might need to do some specific stuff with uh, the position of the pylons and how it's supposed to go above the river or the ravine, you know, stuff like this. Um, everything has its own little complexities, right? Everything can be taken everywhere, anytime, whatever. Um, what I basically explain here is the way that I would say is the best to do this particular um, route or area as. As for the clock strikes 14, to no one notices. Actually, 15. 15 for some. <laughs> they use directional markers as well. Um, no. Unless the tracks are directional in real life. However, majority of uh, the tracks in Slovakia are bidirectional. So, there is no need for me to use directional markers. But uh, as a result, you would need to either have much higher control over the AI, either by locking its junctions or through a lot more uh, truckside assets. So yeah. It's also useful to put catenary tracks and spine magnets on individual layers. Yes. Throws right after the truck layout as rose influence terrain and crossings. Um I guess that is true. They I mean they do obviously interfere with each other, but uh, generally it's I mean, it's always up to you, but generally for this route I think it's gonna be better to um get the IE to have them as part of like the general scenery that's gonna be appear alongside everything. I mean, roads and other spines are definitely probably going to be the first things to appear, along with like some high voltage wires, for example. You know, some bridge splines and path splines and uh, sidewalks. You know, this kind of stuff. So roads are definitely one of the first things that you will do as part of the scenery. But uh, it doesn't generally need to be the first thing. Because you also need to put whistle boards in, depending on where the crossings are, and so those should come before the trackside object stage. Not necessarily. Once again, depends on what you what you are building. 
In this case, placing a visual board later on as part of a track site does not is not really a big hindrance because well, it's just uh, one asset that needs to be placed here and there. And even then, um, you don't whistle for every crossing, right? Like I, I've noticed in uh, UK, you have the whistle board basically in front of every single crossing, a certain distance away. Not here. Here you do not whistle for every single crossing. So, for for uh, for the idea of this route, um, whistle boards being part of like trackside objects and being done even after all of the scenery is finished, yeah, you know that's perfectly fine. I would also say, like, even though they're trackside objects, I would more or less call them like general scenery as well. As well as um, mileposts. I would say those generally are just uh, general scenery. But of course it depends. Because um, some railroads, they have mileposts constantly every 100 meters. Some have every mile, you know. Stuff like that. So it once again depends on the location and stuff like that. In my case, I'm gonna have to be doing the mileposts alongside uh, trackside objects, not last. But as for whistleboards, I can do them last. Two hundred seven at two hundred three. Let's do this. Alright, so what did I say? 207 or 203. Let's do this a real one. Cause why not? Actually, 100 meters might work as well. Hmm. The speed limit is 40 over there anyway, so... At least for now, Okay, I think I know the layout then. It's gonna be interesting to see. The station is being reworked. Rebuilt, so... It's gonna be interesting to see the final layout, but I think you can see the shape. 
what they want to do. And Open Railways already has it, so that's helpful. <clears throat> but I still want to know how it's going to be in the end, so that I can rebuild it. Anyways, let's get to this, so that's... 100 and what? 90? And the bridge is what? 120, okay. Not really. Bridge is 110 meters long. So 65 meters at 196. Followed by 110. And then until the crossing is... Ten. That's 10. That's 20. That's 30. Roughly 35 meters. Something like this. Right, so thirty six down to thirty meters. Okay, let's um Where did I set the zero to? It was this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's good.
Okay. Oh, my post I usually put in when the interrupt is finished because then I can use the mile long train to resistance from mile post zero, which is usually by the main yard on my routes. Yeah, fair enough. And the main yard is often one of the last things I build as to not lose motivation. <laughs> 15, 13, 15, 14. Hey, yes, how could I make such a mistake? Hold on, I'll correct myself. 15, 15. Imagine doing it in transport where two. No. And there what would be difficult. Well, if it does, it doesn't have rulers. It's not in a base game. Nope, it doesn't. It would be much more difficult in just for fever too. In there are ruler objects though. Yeah, there are ruler objects, but yeah, it's not that flexible. I can literally say have a piece of track go at a specific gradient. Nope. Probably feel nothing either. Yep, no, this is not. Can I check tools late two at a time, or do you prefer this way? Um, there are like assets that have two tracks, but uh, not in this game. You cannot lay two tracks at the same time, unless it's already been made like that. It's basically a spline with uh, two tracks. There are track assets that have multiple side-by-side -side track splines, but those were more, I think, in the olden days. Yeah, that's true. Also, yeah, hello. <laughs> Anyways, um, so basically, you saw me just put in a lot of spline points in the in the layout, and I've decided that before actually doing the terrain here, I'm just gonna do the super elevation to fit. Thing here, no, all right, like that. And now I can have my fun with super elevation. I usually, have just a default of certain numbers and limits that I go to that I think simply work the best. And which ones I use depends solely on what it's like. It's like turn definitions and basically how it all looks. Sorry, <clears throat> that was a sneeze, a terrible one. Basically the spline with children's splines that are attached. Yep. Children's splines per green thoughts for sure. But yeah. But most children do have them, you know. Oh yeah. Easy to forget, I know.
What is the spawn point in the middle of the turn? No, no there wasn't. All right, that does it. Oh boy. Oh man, I'm not looking forward to doing the terrain. <laughs> what is I'm fifteen thirty-two. Let's do something else.
Hold on, I appreciate TSC for only having a super relation checkbox to take, but also hate it for being unable to overrule it when necessary. Mm. Just only having it as a tick box. Mm. Yeah, just start all of them for me, please. Thank you. Feel like starting anything right now? Take a tribe. Your vocal cords have informed me that they would appreciate being used more frequently, not that they've put words in my mouth. <laughs> Fair enough. Hold on. Okay. My vocal cords are lying to you. Also, shut up, Gober. But they have put words in your ears. No worries, my vocal cords are lying to you. Don't trust them. Your vocal cords are lying to me. Yes. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day that the fucking horns in trains are louder than the fucking whistles. Or bells. I know that they will never fucking come, but whatever. Now this weight of a train should be nothing. And the fact that you cannot view details in cab. Ah yes, train mass. Random bullshit of numbers. Okay, nine, 733 meters, train mass, 1200 tons. Yes, perfectly doable with this. Nothing. Oh yeah, that's right, that's Vigilance. Heh! <laughs> yeah, at least you get to see the emergency brake in action. <laughs> How was it? No idea. Not that button, by the way. Mm-hmm. Vigilance off. As far as I know, it shouldn't be started. But it should. Okay, it is. <laughs> Hmm. 
completely forgot that the, the program vigilance into it. <laughs> Well, they are, but I'm not. You don't understand. Oh, and neither do I. Should you master a default red white junction lever too someday? Have it still feel the same, but be more detailed? Hmm. I guess they should. I, I don't know. Not really having any kind of opinion on that. I was thinking of doing the actual terrain on the last stretch um, off stream so as to finally have actually so as to, to finally be doing something else on the next stream it's, I think that would be better but yeah I wonder why do maps often look better at dawn or dusk as opposed to noon? Place too many. Maybe it's just stuff with 2D rest and stuff. Maybe because of the fog giving more sense of depth? Could be that. But... I don't know why. Like, generally... Like, but, but the reason why I switched to dawn or dusk is because of the uh, the shadows. They are because they aren't as fucked in this game at these times. But also because... Generally, looking at the grid at noon does not feel good. It's way too shiny and way too like it's it's very bright and very reflective. The default grid of the map, so it's rather hard to actually focus on the stuff that you want to focus on. I don't mind the signal thing if there are no signals, so it cannot get a reading. Oh. 
Well, I'm afraid I think, yeah, but to the full, it just looks better as well. If not live from above. Hmm. You still have brakes applied. I don't. I know it's in initial position, but I don't have brakes applied. Because the brakes on this engine are programmed differently to uh, what the default game has. It just so happens that the position of the lever corresponds to the initial position. So the way the brakes are programmed is according to the real lever. There's, le there's letters on the bottom, each one means something else. No, they're very hard to read, because, yeah, texture.exe. But basically it's uh, different things for different uh, position. And as such, um, the game rather... Uh, this, the way it's program is that when you move the lever, it does depending it does the stuff that uh depending on which letter it's aimed at and just so happens that this uh brake position which is to be used when uh, you're driving so right now happens to correspond with the initial position on the um on the user on the user interface but in reality the pressure in the brake cylinders is not rising nor going down, it's stable in the release position. But yeah, so far it's looking nicely, the super elevation so far is not very noticeable, which is good, but it's still there, which is also good. And so that means it's gonna be easier to play around with catenary over here, I will not have to um, manipulate it that much. If at all, to make sure that the pantograph still catches it. But yeah, I know that some of the um, tighter turns, the supervision is gonna be a bit uh, more noticeable. And on those I will probably have to play around with the uh, catenary position a bit more. Do the spines have vertical curves too? The gradient changes? Yes, yes they do. Nothing too dramatic currently, but yes. Yeah. I mean, right now we are constantly descending. At, well, not constantly, it's varied a little bit because of the way I made it. But generally the track is descending in, uh, in our direction of travel. Actually, might be more noticeable on over here at the end. You see how the ballast is relatively hidden in the ground. Over here in the turn, the elevation starts, and you can see how it uh, just goes above the terrain here.
Man, it's going to be very nice to drive across. <laughs> One thing that still needs to be fixed, and uh, I think it's been over a year now. As a script for some of these freight cars, and I believe it's these ones, the grain hoppers. They have the slight issue, along with the car transporters as well. And the issue is that for some weird reason they cap the maximum speed of a train at 80 km per hour. No matter what, they just cap it at that. Engine started, fuck you. Actually, it tells me that I'm just gonna... Yes, but you get smooth changes basically for free. Yes. Most of the free wagons don't have connected chains. No, not all of them, no. Because uh, I believe on some of them it's a separate uh, mesh that needs to be activated. Not on that one. Not on that one. Uh, I believe these guys have it as an automatic, but it doesn't seem to have registered that. Probably because of the quick drive. Generally, quick drive stuff doesn't work. These train, these cars do have the chain connected. Yeah, and for these ones, it has not registered either. But I know they have the mesh available for that. And this one is the only one that I can play you has. Everything manual, including the screw and the brake holes. And the train and signs. Rolling stock speed limiter thing. Yeah, Slofnaft. What does that translate to? Uh, basically, it's a it's a name of a refinery in Slovakia. And I would say that like the most closest translation would be Slovak diesel, low naft, as in Slovak nafta, basically. But they do make more products than just diesel, so... Those cement cars, I wonder, is the interior of each chamber spinning? No. No, because uh, you're not actually transporting um, concrete in that. A cement truck is a bit of a misleading name because you're actually transporting concrete itself in a cement truck. Whereas in these cars, you're actually transporting cement itself, which is basically just a powder. In a cement truck, you are actually transporting wet concrete with all of the ingredients in and you're just mixing it so that it doesn't... Uh, uh, what's the word? But it doesn't get stiff, I guess, in the truck. Whereas here, on... Rails you're transporting literally just like the cement powder without all the other ingredients to make concrete like sand and water and stuff like that, I don't know. 
so you don't need to spin it. It's basically just a hopper. <laughs> yeah, Fire Cable is just gonna derail, doesn't matter. Oh, what the fuck is that? No time, you, want, may, you may want to fix that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, ask guys about the scrape for these train cars. To see if we can fix the speed limit. Thingy. Uh, as for everything else regarding like the screw couplers and stuff, that's pretty much just... Yeah, the fact that it's like quick drive. The way I loaded the scenario and we know that that's just broken and doesn't load all the stuff necessary. But yeah. Anyways. That is that I would say. For today I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna do the actual terrain of this area. Off stream most likely. I'll see yet so that I can provide some other content as well to this and then I'm um, gonna get myself to do the scenery here yay that's gonna be fucking pain <laughs> anyways um, thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed follow, subscribe, check out Sheridice, check out Kengo, check out all the other guys in the chat as well not sure if you if they stream or not, but doesn't matter. Go check them out. <laughs> I'm gonna read the chat one last time. Finally, so this lip. Interesting. I think it was just the right sound photo. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The Take cement, spread it out, let it sun dry, crunch it to a powder, then load it in those wagons. <laughs> yes, I mean, those train cars, um, they can transport more than just cement. So, yeah. Can't remember the English name of uh, one of the cargoes they can transport, but I know what they can transport. <laughs> sure, sounds like a grand plan. Well, the element doesn't mean that it causes the entire train to fly to space and make everyone dizzy from the camera spinning. Yes! The garbled mess. Trains used to have the element physics. Yeah. The cars used to have physics when derailed in previous transversions, but I believe they got rid of that with Tain. Yep. They get rid of that in Tain. It wasn't in Tain already. The train just stops at the end of the track like it does now. Before that, uh, they uh, they derailed and slid across the terrain. But I remember in the earlier, well, the earliest versions of uh, trains, when they had derailments and the cars would slide across the tracks, uh, like across the ground. Sorry, um, they would actually leave dust particles up in the air. That was fucking cool. Also, the fact that you could have the trains drift and whatnot. Back then in the earliest version of trains, the trains were actually uh they didn't have one attachment point to the track like they do now. They actually attach to the tracks through the boogies through the wheels. But now it's just the center of the locomotive or well whatever the creator designs as the center of the engine. Obviously, the way the train twists around the track is still the, uh, guided by the boogies, but um, the attachment itself to the track spine is done only via one point. But only in old versions, yeah. But it did always throw you into the free roam view when derailed. And it still does. Yep. Thank you for the shout out, of course. I remember seeing an old video about that. Yep. With very early transversion junctions never got locked, so you could switch it with locomotive was on it. So the bug will give one the track and the other on the other. Yes. 
I'm gonna change the drift. I wonder why they got rid of all these features. No idea. Better for performance debates now, but the old way was cooler. <laughs> yep. Yes, so. Multi truck shifting thing could still work. Yes. Get rid of the junction locking thing. It's good for mucking about, but nothing else really. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Have a wonderful day. And I suppose I'll see you all guys next time. So, yeah. Bye bye. To the sky.